It turns out that Zwift has something in common with Arrested Development, Avocados, and First Dates with My Wife. They all benefit from the rule of give it three goes. Arrested Development episodes one and two, don't get it. After episode three, my favorite TV show ever. Avocado one and two, Green Mush, why? After number three, supply me with these daily. Date one and two, she's fun, but nuts. After date three, I'll probably marry her. And so it is with Zwift. After race one, didn't like it. This was after race two. I may well be done with Zwift, but last night was race three and I am 100% hooked. And it is genuinely down to your comments on that last video. I was absolutely ready to never use it again. But so many people gave feedback and ideas as to how I could improve and make it work for me that I thought, I just have to give it three goes. Warming up, 10 minutes to go. And I have a plan, sort of. Mike Tyson said that everyone has a plan so they get punched in the face. But this is online cycling, so I'm sorted. This is a 12 lap race, 23.6K total, only 200 meters of total climbing. Gonna take about 35 minutes. I know that for a category C rider because I looked it up on Zwift Power from last week's race, same event. Oh yes, we are prepared this time. 35 minutes feels like it's long enough for me to sort of settle in and practice the things I need to practice and make up for any single mistakes that I might make, but not so long that I'll die before the end. The one bit of advice I was given that I'm not following for this particular race was to do an event where the categories go off separately. So I'd only be riding with my category C colleagues, as it were. This race doesn't do that, but what this race does do is it ensures that everybody that's in it has to be on Zwift power. So at least I can look at my results easily afterwards. And also, and the main reason I'm doing it, it's run by Newbury Cycle Club, which is just down the road from me. Um, given I'm racing against cartoon people, does it matter that they're down the road? Probably not. It just seemed quite cool all the same. I had a short run today, 3K with the dogs, easy chest and shoulder session as well. I feel relatively okay. Bottom line, I have no days where I'm 100% rested at the moment. It is what it is. Tomorrow, I've got a five hour bike ride out on the road. Sunday, three hour trail run with Nixon. Monday's my birthday. So Tuesday is then recovering from eating 20,000 calories on my birthday. There are no perfect days. This is as good as it's gonna get. Although, my aero bars snapped off earlier. The sweat that drips on the bolts rusted the bolts and they just snapped off. So, not quite a punch in the face. An annoying slap though. Okay, five minutes. That feedback that I got on the last video, and thank you for watching that if you did, and subscribing if you did, if you didn't, do it now because subscriptions and likes and watches, all that stuff is just the YouTube currency that lets me keep making videos, which is handy because the real YouTube currency doesn't cover my avocados. Anyway, that feedback could be divided into three groups. There was the Zwift Sucks group. You're too heavy anyway, it's full of cheats, if you want to play video games, stick to Chucky Egg. There was the Zwift is okay, but to be fair, you're always going to struggle. If you don't mind that, here's a few things you could try. And there was the Zwift is great. Yeah, you're a bit heavy, but so what? Here's even more things you could try. Trust me, keep at it. It is great. So I focused on the second two groups and read every single comment. And some people wrote loads. It was amazing. Seriously, thank you so much. This video is literally happening because of that type of feedback. I read every single comment and I wrote down the tips that just kept coming up again and again and I made sure I focused on them in this race. Okay, 30 seconds to go. The plan is to get off the line with about 500 watts. Uh, unlike last time where I dumped 1,000 watts and every ounce of energy I had in the first 20 seconds. Okay, 15 seconds. Okay. Eight, six, five, four, two, one, go. So this was the first tip I was given. 
get off the line strong, but don't try and lead the entire race. So I aimed about 500 watts, I then settled into about 400 watts, and it felt better. I was much more in control. I was in the group of riders at the front. Having said that, even pushing 400 watts for a while, I was dropped down to almost 100th place pretty quickly. They do go hard from the start. 85 out of 185. Okay, what's half of 185? So at this point, I had realized there were 185 riders in the race. 92nd would put me in the top half of 185, which was complicated math to do with all the blood rushing to my legs, but it gave me a target, something to focus on, come 92nd or better. Okay, let's work this out. I want to be above average, 185. Uh, half of 150, 80 is 40, 42, 92, 92. I need to be, I'm literally above average. I can't finish lower than 92. Okay, my RPM's too high. The next tip I'd been given was that I'd been spinning RPM far too fast last time. Uh, when I ride the trainer in here, I tend to do about 95 RPM fairly consistently. I was often up around 120 and higher in my last race. So this time, every time I spotted that, I changed gear, bring it back down under 100. Again, just much more in control and aware of what I was doing. Lap three. I don't think I can keep this up. Jeez, 12 laps. Hopefully everyone slows down. <laughs> it is easy, if you take your health and fitness seriously, to walk around your local town and think, man, everyone else is just fat and lazy. But then there are moments where you realize that's not quite the case. For me, the first time I did a Spartan obstacle course race in age group, I turned up, I thought, bunch of 40 something men, this will be a walkover. Came second to last, just an absolute bunch of beasts. And it is nice to be reminded occasionally there are other people out there as well taking it as seriously as you do. It's nice. It's also grim. Trying to keep up was hard. They just did not slow down. Okay, plan is to use the fast downhill to get back in the middle of that pack. Every now and then I'd get dropped off the back of the pack and I'd been told, get back in the pack when that happens as quickly as you can. The drafting effect, even more important, because my aero bars had snapped off. So I'd use this really cool twisty downhill section, my favorite part of the course, where I could just drop five, 600 watts and get back into the pack if I needed to. Short course, 12 laps, so obviously I got lots of goes at it. I realized that was the place I could use the advantage of being heavy, not being a disadvantage. And it worked, it was my favorite part of the course. And shout out to the kicker bike as well. The course, that part of it was downhill, but it was rolling, ups and downs. And the kicker bike was just up and down over it, getting harder and easier, as realistic as you could possibly want it to be indoors. 10 out of 10 for that machine. Okay. The opposite was obviously true for the one hill that there was, but I was much better prepared this time. Again, based on the advice I've been given, I made sure I was in the right gear. As I hit the hill, I prepared for it in my head. I'd spin up it, stay in the pack, made sure I was always in the pack going up the hill, and it felt much less uh, detrimental than hills had done in my last race. I never got to the top of the hill thinking, oh, I've been left behind this time. So the hill was okay. Having said that, it was more of a slope than the hill, but it was, uh, it was still higher at the finish than it was at the beginning. Okay, new target with three laps to go. Be in the top 100. Be in the top 100. Okay, so three laps left and I was dying at this point completely. The pack that I was in consisted of the person at the front of that being 95th place and the person at the back being 110th or something. So position 92 that I wanted was in the pack ahead and there was just no way that I was gonna have enough energy to leave my pack, which I was struggling to stay in as it was, and get to the next pack. 
So last lap, and I'm a few places off of my target of top 100. Half of me thinks, doesn't matter, I could out sprint these last guys, lap. easy. Half of me thinks, no last I can't, lap. they are gonna just bugger off and leave me, I'm gonna get destroyed here. Echo, play Rocky soundtrack. So I unleash my secret weapon. Oh, we got it now. Unfortunately, it was always too motivating too quick. I immediately went to the front of the pack, feeling great, thought I'll lead from the front the whole way till the end of the race. Rather unrealistic. So we're down to one kilometer to go. I'm at the back of the pack. I'm outside of my top 100 target. And then 600 meters left, as I go past this guy, I realize that he's someone that I'm lapping, my position doesn't change. The pack that I need to be in is shooting off ahead of me. But then we go into this downhill section, the bit that I love, and it's this bit right here. This is the bit that I love in anything, when I'm running, when I'm lifting in life, where you are not quite where you want to end up. You are off track. But there is a moment where you just realize that you have it. It's intoxicating. You know you are going to achieve what it is you want to achieve, even though you are not quite there yet. At this point, the pack in the distance, I'm outside the top 100. I am 100% certain, absolutely no question about it whatsoever, that I'm going to finish inside the top 100. Love it. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Down the final bend. Drop a cheeky thousand watt burst. Can't quite catch this guy. Ninety ah! fifth. Ah! And I am hooked on Zwift. Yes! Come on! Okay, so the results on Zwift Power. Of the 38 riders that are in Category C that are on Zwift Power, I was 18th out of 38. Which is a tiny bit annoying, tiny bit, because 17th would obviously have been the top half of 38 and above average. So, this guy some interesting numbers there's only one person in category c with a higher average wattage for the whole race than me uh, that was the guy that won it with 4.4 watts per kilogram he was two minutes ahead of the rest of us so i'm not gonna worry about him my wattage per kilogram was pretty average as you'd expect because i was middle of the pack so that makes sense my 5 and 15 second best wattages were miles ahead of anybody else in my group uh, in fact, interestingly, if you tally the entire field of all categories by those best wattages for a duration of time, on the shorter times, I did really well. And I know, I know, I know, pure wattage is a pointless number in Zwift. Watts per kilogram, I understand. But I hadn't even ridden a bike properly until the summer, so I'm allowed to have fun looking at those numbers all the same. As expected, I was the tallest, I was one of the heaviest. There were a couple of people heavier than me. Nobody heavier than me beat me. I won in the 100 kilogram and heavier category. It's a category that I've just invented for myself. So Zwift is now part of my training life, my cycling routine. When Trainer Road gives me a hard session to do on there, an interval session or something, I will definitely contemplate taking a Zwift race instead, dropping that in. Maybe some of the longer group rides as well. When I get a long session to do in here, three, four hours gets a bit tedious on Trainer Road. Maybe dropping in a group ride to mix that up a little bit as well. The rest of today is a five hour ride out on the road and then tomorrow is a trail run. Me and Nixon were out crushing 15 miles of trails. It's actually a run that was supposed to be a race but they've canceled it because of coronavirus. The good news about that is they've shifted us onto their January run which is a nighttime run. So me and Nixon in the dark with head torches, we're very excited about that. 
Tomorrow they're giving us the GPX file, so we know where the route is, we're going to get down to where the race should have happened, we're going to run it anyway on our own. Obviously I'll be taking all my off-road trail running gear with me for self-supported running. I'll do a bit of a video on that, the favourite bits I like to take. Subscribe so you know when that comes up. And as before, comment below. Genuinely love reading all the feedback, it is great to have. Stick it down there. And any questions you've got, questions are about my training ideally, don't be asking me quite how nuts she was on those first dates.